In his prime, Madison Bumgarner was one of the most feared pitchers in the entire league. He made multiple all-star teams, was consistently in Cy Young conversations, helped to lead the Giants to a dynasty, and was on pace to be a first ballot Hall of Famer alongside pitchers like Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke, and Justin Verlander. Unfortunately, his f career fell off a cliff, and he's currently unemployed, and viewed as one of the worst pitchers in the entire league. Today, we're going to go over his insane prime and his equally insane fall off to try and figure out what went wrong. Madison Bumgarner had a very interesting upbringing. He was born on August 1st, 1989 in Hickory, North Carolina, which is nicknamed Bumtown due to the incredible amount of people with the last name Bumgarner that lived there. So much so, in fact, that he ended up dating a girl with the name Madison Bumgarner while he was in high school. But according to him, there was no relation there. His father had an incredible impact on his baseball career growing up. Not only did he build the log cabin that Bumgarner grew up in, but he also signed him up for his first baseball league at just four years old, where he had to sign a special waiver just so Bumgarner could play because he was under the five to eight year old age range that the league was intended for. He was naturally talented at baseball from a young age. He dominated his peers without even being able to throw a curveball until he turned 16, due to his father worrying that throwing it too early would cause major el elbow problems down the line that would cut his career short. He made the varsity team his junior season with a new curveball added to his arsenal and began to mow hitters down. He ended his junior year with a 0 0.99 ERA and 120 strikeouts in 84 innings, and even managed to add a 333 batting average with 6 homers and 26 RBIs at the plate, which helped his team to finish runner-up in the state championship game. His incredible play brought the attention of MLB scouts and agents from across the country. So much so that his dad ended up having to build a wall around the bullpen so that he wouldn't get distracted while warming up. Senior year, he was elite yet again. His ERA went up by 0.06 points, but he added 23 strikeouts in just two more innings and took a step up at the plate with a batting average over 400 with 11 homers and 48 RBIs and led his team to actually win the state title game this time around with him being named MVP of the playoffs. Following the season, his accomplishments continued to reign in. He was named North Carolina's Gatorade Player of the Year. He was ranked as the fifth best high school player in the country behind only future big leaguers and Rick Porcello, Jason Hayward, Josh Bitters, and Matt Harvey, and committed to go play for the University of North Carolina. He didn't ever end up playing a game for UNC though, because with the 10th pick in the 2007 MLB draft, the San Francisco Giants decided to draft Madison Bumgarner. With high school baseball players, there's usually a pretty big learning curve as they adjust to playing professional baseball, but this wasn't the case with Bumgarner, as he came out of the gate and dominated. In his first pro season, he put up a 1.43 ERA with 164 strikeouts and 142.2 innings. This was good enough to earn him a promotion the following season in 2000 up to double A where he continued to perform at a high level putting up an ERA under two yet again in 103 innings and he was even able to grab a cup of coffee in the MLB in September due to injuries but he saw limited action mainly coming out of the bullpen because they were just trying to give him a taste of what it's like to pitch against big leaders but he performed pretty well when given the opportunity putting up a 1.8 ERA across four appearances heading into the 2010 season things were looking bright for both the Giants and Bumgarner the Giants were reaching the end of their rebuild with a young core built of guys like Ten Lincecum, Matt Cain, Pablo Sandoval, Sergio Romo and Brian Wilson, and guys like Mad Bum and Buster Posey that were hoping to get their turn with the big league club soon. Heading into spring training, Bumgarner was ranked as the Giants' number one prospect and was expected to compete for a spot in the Giants' starting rotation heading into the season, but unfortunately, he showed up to camp a little bit out of shape, so he was forced to start the season in AAA. He continued to perform well, though, while in AAA, putting up a 3.16 ERA in 56 Ks and 14 starts, and finally, on June 26, the Giants called him back up to the bigs to replace an injured Todd Wellemeyer. He played so well upon being called up that by the time Wellemeyer returned in August, Bumgarner had taken his spot in the starting rotation. Bumgarner was a big reason that the team ended up making the playoffs down the stretch. In the month of September, he posted a 1.13 ERA for the month to help the Giants come back from being down three games in the division to winning the NL West title with a 92-70 and record. Bumgarner finished the season with a 7-6 and record, a 3 ERA, and 86 Ks, which helped him to make the all-rookie team. If you guys know anything about baseball history, then you know what happens next. The Giants took down the Braves in four games in the NLDS, upset the one-seed Phillies in six games, and then handled the Texas Rangers in five games to take home their first World series since moving to San Francisco from New York in the 50s, and began their dynasty. As you'd expect, Bumgarner performed well in the playoffs, showing flashes of greatness that was going to come later in his career. He went 2-0 with a 2.18 ERA and 18 strikeouts across four appearances in the playoffs, and at just 21 years old, he was a World Series champion. 2011 was the first season that Bumgarner was given the opportunity to start the season on the big league roster, and he got off to a bit of a rough start with a 4.58 ERA across his first seven starts of the season, but he settled down to finish the season strong with a 3.21 ERA and 191 Ks in 204 innings, which earned him Cy Young votes for the first time in his career. While Bumgarner was solid this season, the same can't be said for the Giants as a whole, as they finished the season 86-76 and, and missed out on the playoffs due to the offense taking a step back. 
Prior to the 2012 season, the Giants realized that they had a stud with Bumgarner and decided to lock him up long term by signing him to a six year, $35.6 million contract that included additional $12 million club options in 2017 and 2018. It was an even year again, so of course the Giants were once again one of the best teams in the whole league. They won the division again and finished with a 94 and 68 record, but Bumgarner pitched the worst he had ever pitched in his life, finishing with a 3.37 ERA and 191 strikeouts in 208.1 innings, which is crazy to say out loud because that would be a lot of pitchers' career best year. The Giants' run through the National League was a lot more difficult this time around. It took them all five games to take down the Reds in the NLDS, then seven to take down the defending champ Cardinals in the NLCS before a cakewalk of the Detroit Tigers in the World Series, who they swept to win their second ring in three years. Bumgarner honestly wasn't that great this time around in the playoffs, finishing with a 1-2 and two record and an ERA of 6, but it didn't hold the team back from winning their second ring in three years, and he made up for it down the line, so who cares? 2013 was a down year for the Giants, but it was the year that Bumgarner established himself as one of the top starters in the league. He made his first career All-Star game and set career best in just about every category. PR'd in ERA, whip, and strikeouts and finished with a 2.77 ERA. ERA and had 199 strikeouts in 201.1 innings, which was good enough to finish 9th in Cy Young voting. 2014 was a great year for Bumgarner and the Giants. He was named the team's opening day starter for the first time in his career, and just a couple days later, he hit his first career Grand Slam and picked up a career-high 5 RBIs. Then, next month he won Pitcher of the Month, after going 5-0 in 6 starts with a 2.08 ERA with 48 strikeouts. And just like the season before, he made the All-Star game. While the first half of his season was good, the second half was elite. He got named NL Pitcher of the Month yet again after a dominant August, where he had a 4-1 record of 1.57 ERA and through three complete games, while having 56 strikeouts to only three walks. He finished the second half with a 2.29 ERA, which helped to bring his season ERA under three. And he also picked up 219 strikeouts over 217 innings, which helped him to finish at the top five for Cy Young for the first time in his career. As if his pitching wasn't good enough, he also took home the Silver Slugger that season for the first time in his career. But the legend of Mad Bum was just beginning to be written. He was about to go on one of the most legendary postseason runs of all time. He got started in the wild card game, taking on the Pirates, and he absolutely shut down the Pirates' offense. He pitched a complete game shutout, and not just that, but he had 10 strikeouts to top off the performance. In the NLDS, the Giants were taking on the Washington Nationals, and Bumgarner didn't really play a factor in the series. He pitched in the only loss of the series, giving up two earned runs and a 4-1 loss, but it didn't matter because the Giants went on to win the series in four games. In the next round of the playoffs, the Giants were set to face the defending NL champs in the St. Louis Cardinals, and Bumgarner brought his A game. In game one, he pitched seven and two-thirds scoreless innings with seven Ks and a win, and also set a postseason record for most consecutive scoreless innings on the road, with 26 and two-thirds. He pitched again in Game 5, where he gave up only three runs in eight innings, and he left in the eighth inning with a game tied, before Travis Ishikawa had a walk-off three-run homer to take the series in five games. Bumgarner's play in the series earned him an LCS MVP, and he and the Giants were set to take on the Kansas City Royals in the World Series. He took the mound in Game 1 and picked up right where he left off in the NLCS. He pitched seven innings and only gave up one run as the Giants picked up the dub 7-1. The Giants called on him again in Game 5, and he showed up yet again. He pitched a second complete game game shutout of the postseason, had 8 strikeouts and only gave up 4 hits in the entire game. In game 7, the Giants were leading 3-2 heading into the 5th inning, when they decided to call on their ace yet again. He came into the game out of the bullpen and proceeded to shut down the Royals. He pitched 5 scoreless innings in relief to preserve the Giants' 1-run lead and also earn the save. His amazing performance in World Series earned him World Series MVP, marked the end of an incredible dynasty, and also gave us one of the most awkward trophy ceremonies in history. At Chevrolet, we have, um, we have also been proud of the latest and greatest uh, technology in our truck lineup. Bumgarner finished his postseason run with a record 52 and two thirds innings pitch, a 1.03 ERA and 48 strikeouts and cemented himself as a postseason legend. The awards kept coming in even after the playoffs were over. He was given the Babe Ruth Award, which is an award given out by the BBW AA to the best postseason performance of the year. He was also given the Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year and was also named the Associated Press Male Athlete of the Year, which left him with a very heavy trophy case. Like I said, the Giants wouldn't make it back to the the World Series, but the next two seasons were still very solid for him. He made two more opening day starts, made two more All-Star games, finished in the top 10 in Cy Young voting in back-to-back -back seasons, and also eclipsed the 1,000 career strikeouts and 100 career wins milestones. In 2016, the Giants made it back to the playoffs where Bumgarner was once again elite, but the Giants' even year magic wore off as they were eliminated in the NLDS by the eventual champs in the Chicago Cubs. Bumgarner was only 27 years old heading into the 2017 season, and if he just stayed on the pace he'd been playing on for the last few seasons, we might be talking about 
when he was going to join the other legends of the MLB in the Hall of Fame, but that's unfortunately not what happened. He started getting bit by the injury bug. In 2017, he missed three months of the season after getting into a dirt bike accident that hurt his shoulder and ribs, and he finished the season with his worst number since his first full season in the bigs. In 2018, he didn't even make his first appearance until June because he broke his finger in spring training and it required surgery. He once again put up career worst numbers and was hoping to bounce back the following year. While he was once again healthy in 2019, he no longer looked like the same pitcher. He pitched over 200 innings and had over 200 strikeouts yet again, but this year his ERA was hovering close to four. Following the 2019 season, he was set to become a free agent for the first time in his career, and it was hard to imagine that he'd ever put on any other uniform other than a San Francisco Giants jersey since he'd been part of the organization since he'd been drafted at 18 years old. But that's exactly what happened. He said he felt like the Giants offer was a slap in the face and left to sign a five-year, $85 million contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Giants were smart to let him go, however, because his time with the D-backs was nothing short of a disaster. In the shortened COVID season, he only made five stars for the team, putting up a 6.48 ERA in 41 and two-third innings before getting placed on that IR once again because he was only averaging about 85 to 87 miles per hour on his fastball. He didn't bounce back in 2021, once again putting up horrible numbers while dealing with injuries. And his only highlight from that season was throwing a seven-inning no-hitter and a doubleheader that didn't even officially count as a no-hitter. 2022 was more of the same, and in 2023, he reached an all-time low that didn't even seem possible for him. He looked like the worst pitcher in all of baseball. He was giving the long ball up at an absurd rate. He wasn't striking out batters, and after just four games, he was DFA'd. In his four starts that season, he went 0-3 with a 10.26 ERA and only had 10 Ks in 16 and two-third innings. And honestly, it's not looking likely that he will ever play in the MLB again. It's really sad to see what was once such a promising career in the way that his did. He probably won't make it into the Hall of Fame, but we can remember his four-year stretch of dominance, his legendary postseason run, and his fiery personality. And most of all, I think we can all be grateful that we were able to witness the rise and fall of Madison Bumgarner. That's all for today, guys. Make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new. Comment who you'd like to see me do a video on next, and until next time, peace.